out here today. I appreciate it. Um, I just wanted to go over a couple like basic rules we want to have here. Um, this is a peaceful protest, so please don't engage with any counter protesters. We want to. Oh, my name is Carly Hudson. I'm the event coordinator for this. Um, I kind of dove into the deep end with this. I never thought that it could be this big. Um, and I'm just so thankful that all of you can make it out tonight, or today. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, Thank you. so just a couple of rules. You just remain peaceful. This is a peaceful protest. We're not here for any violence, as you all know. Um, we're trying to leave no trace, so leave it like you found it. Um, pick up your bottles, any of those big, big paper bags that you see. Feel free to put your recycling in those, the, or even trash. We're just trying to keep it um, as clean as possible. Um, if someone does try to engage with you, smile and nod. <laughs> stay on the sidewalk. The whole way up, there's a railing. We do ask that you stay on the left side. Hold the mic put it right against your mouth. <laughs> like you're going to eat it. <laughs> stay on the sidewalk, OK, guys? Yeah. Safe and let's make change happen. Yeah. Good My name is Carmel Shaibi, and I'm a sophomore at Melbourne High School. Up until exactly 38 days ago, my main focuses at school revolved around the usual: doing my homework, studying for tests, attending club meetings, and creating everlasting friends, memories with my friends. But ever since, these memories have been stained by a horrific accident that cannot be simply brushed over and more importantly, cannot be ignored. The horrendous mass shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School has created a footprint in our society and has lit a spark of both hope and despair within me. The, hope, the spark of hope is ignited by the continuous efforts of communities and students especially across the nation who have joined arms in exercising their rights in order to create a safer, stronger future. But this spark of hope is accompanied by a flicker of despair, resulting from the lack of integrity and courage of our Florida lawmakers who have passed ill-advised, ill-equipped bills and our country's leaders who have repeatedly let their people down. <laughs> Following the incident, our elected officials made several decisions that left me wondering how. How could one do this? Why are they not listening to the people who put them in their place? One of these decisions was Governor Rick Scott's decision to sign a school safety bill that could potentially arm teachers. <laughs> Nothing more than a rushed decision to transfer the burden and responsibility of repercussions to school districts. This law comes with several problems, such as the possibility of a teacher shooting an unarmed student in the chaos of a mass shooting. Also, it includes the, the a problem is uh, the massive concern of where the gun should be kept in order to keep it far out of reach from students, but at the same time leaving it easily accessible for a teacher in, in the occurrence of a shooting. In addition, by acting on such a law, we are assuming that a teacher whose job is imbued with love for the community and their children can take on the calculating persona to shoot down another person. It is obvious how flawed this bill is, and the only way to fix it is through change. Club, Sandy Hook Elementary, Virginia Tech, Sutherland Springs, San Bernardino, Columbia, Columbine High School, the list goes on. So I ask Congress, what are you waiting for? Yeah! How many more lives need to be taken before you realize there is a problem? How many protests would you like? How about a couple more pray for hashtags? You have failed us too many times, and now we are taking matters into our own hands. Yeah! if you make it. Who we are now as a society is not who we were last year, last month, yesterday, or even a minute ago. All across the nation, at this very moment, we join arms with millions of friends protesting for change. Yeah. With every second, in every city, we grow stronger, building a staircase to success. But these steps 
but these steps to success can only be conquered through action. Within the past month, I've learned there are three types of people. Those who simply resist change, those who accept change but are too scared to make action, and those who create change. In order to reach the top of the staircase, you must be willing to take action and create change. The time to sort of sit back and lay low, waiting for what you want to see change, actually change, is over. So I urge you to adhere to Gandhi's words that you must be the change you wish to see in the world. Yeah. Good girl. In these very moments, when everything seems hopeless, that we have a real chance to grow into something better. You see, the capacity to change is a gift. The ability to change is a skill. But the willingness to change, the willingness to change is a choice. Yeah. So will you make that choice? Yeah. 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 Will you be the one future generations look back to and appraise? Yeah. Yeah. Will you be the change you seek? Yeah. Yeah. In the end, it is only you that can decide. Thank I didn't pay a ton of attention to politics. Is that okay? Um, and in the last couple years, I've realized that I have some opinions, and maybe you're here because you have some opinions, and you feel like there are some things that need to change. And I've realized that hasn't been easy. Uh, for some of you, even being here today is not easy as it relates to your friends, to your family members. Uh, I want to say I am proud to stand with you, to march with you in our little town today, uh, this afternoon. Some people have said, to me, just stick to hope. Just talk about hope. Just talk about love. Talk about compassion. And my day job is mental health. And so with that, to write Love on Our Arms hat on, I am here because more than 60 people die by suicide with a gun every single day in this country. And so when we talk about gun violence, we're not just talking about mass shootings. Uh, this, as you know, as, as so many of us know, this touches so many people, so many groups of people, so many aspects of life. And the simple reality is that America represents four and a half percent of the world's population and yet for some reason Americans own more than 40 percent of the guns. Uh, we live in a country that has an obsession with guns and because and we are here today saying that needs to change and we're not saying it's all or nothing we're saying there are some common sense things that need to happen uh, so that our kids so that my nephews so that the young people that are here the young people that you love can grow up in a place, in a country, in a state, in a city that is safer. Uh, I, I get to spend some time with our, or at our local high schools. I was back at Satellite High School where I graduated from. Uh, I was there a couple days ago and happened to be there when the fire alarm went off. And in that moment just got a, a taste of what life is like for these students because we now live in a world and these guys are going to school in a world where your first thought when you hear the fire alarm is not a fire. Your first thought is what happened at Stoneman Douglas. And we are here today to say that that is not the world that these guys should grow up in. Um, that these guys deserve to feel safe. And I, I am encouraged uh, being here because sometimes it's been hard for me to live in Florida. It's even been hard having conversations with friends who I grew up with, and it just feels like we live on two different planets. Yes. Yeah. Right? Some of you yeah. agree, you, you get that. Uh, and so my hope is that as you stand here today, as you look around, uh, that you get to leave here encouraged and realize that you are not alone in wanting things to change. that you are not alone in saying, hey, we can do some simple things. We can take some simple steps that again are not all or nothing, but that can create a safer world, can create a safer country, can create safer schools for the young people who are here. And, and I know that that is why I'm here. I'm here more as an uncle today than anything in that bio that was read. Uh, I am here because I want my nephews to grow up feeling safe. Right? Life is hard enough. School is hard enough. Growing up is hard enough. 
we can take some simple steps to just help people feel safer. Uh, we've seen so much talk, I know some of, the, some of the signs reflect this, but we're at a point where we need to protect kids, not guns. Yeah. Yeah. Where if we have to choose between the two, we're saying nothing matters more than a person. And a young person deserves to grow up in safety. A young person deserves to grow up and become an old person, right? They deserve that whole journey. They deserve every aspect of this life. And I love that led by the young people of South Florida, that we finally seem to have broken the cycle. Right? We were so sick of thoughts and prayers and hashtags and oh man, that's awful. And all of a sudden, this happened at a school where these kids said, we are gonna, we are gonna force change. We are not only the victims, but we are gonna let this anger and this pain and this grief drive us to change things. And so there's, there's two scenarios that I can imagine. Uh, the first is that we put pressure on our elected officials to do the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. And the second is that if they don't, we vote them out and we vote yeah. them out. We vote for people who will work for us, will work for our children, will not work for the NRA. Yeah. Yeah. So that our kids can feel safe. Good girl. So that they will come to our funerals, but we don't have to go to theirs. Yeah. Uh, and I, more than anything, I'm here to cheer on the young people here today. Yes. I love that this is put on by high school students. Yeah. For We are so proud of you. Yeah. 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 And we yes. are honored and privileged to get to march with you and for you today. Yeah.